In all our previous sections, we have discussed how apps are built and run in detail. Hello everyone, welcome back again. Today, in this section, we will be going to understand Android App Sandboxing. This mechanism ensures the security and isolation of each application within the Android ecosystem. Let's delve into the intricate layers of App Sandboxing to gain a comprehensive understanding. You're probably aware that Android is based on the Linux kernel. The way users are kept separate in Linux also applies to Android, but with a slight twist. Let's break it down by understanding how user IDs, UIDs, are given to processes on regular Linux systems. As usual, we're on a Kali Linux virtual machine. To examine running processes owned by a specific user, we execute the command, ps-u, specify the username, Kali. This presents us with a list of currently active processes associated with the user Kali. For a more targeted view of processes associated with user Kali, utilize the same command along with grep and specify the desired process name. As observed, both processes are visible under the same user ID. However, the scenario changes when it comes to Android apps. Each app installed on your device possesses a distinct user ID, UID. This mechanism ensures that every app operates within its isolated environment or sandbox, separate from others. Consequently, apps are unable to access each other's data or resources. To verify this, open a new terminal and run the command adb shell ps, grep u0. This will show you that each app gets a distinct UID. If you look at the first part of the output, you'll see that every installed app runs as its own user with names like U0. For instance, the dialer app goes by the user U0A14. You'll notice similar usernames for other apps. Remember, if two apps have the same developer key, it means they can share data with each other. The user IDs, UIDs, assigned to users are distinct and individual. For instance, the user U0A14 corresponds to the UID 1723. To verify the correlation between users and UIDs on a rooted device, you can inspect the packages.xml file found in the data-slash-system directory. It's important to note that the internal configurations of Android can differ, and therefore, this approach may not always yield precise results. To grasp this concept better, let's take a closer look at the UID mapping for some apps. But before that, let me run a user installed app to observe. After running the app, use the ps command and check the first column of the process. In the provided example, the application resides within the user U0A73. To delve further, we can investigate the underlying user ID, UID, mapping. Open the terminal and enter the command cat, followed by the path to the packages.xml file. However, the output might be overwhelming, so I'll paste it into a text editor for clarity. From there, search for the app by its package name. Copy and paste the package name in the search. If you see the field user ID equals 10073, it means that the app with the user U0A73 is tied to the user ID 10073. Now, let's consider a pre-installed app such as comAndroid.DeskClock, which comes preloaded in the Android VM under the user U0A14. Upon inspecting the packages.xml file, you will notice that it is associated with the user ID 10051. App Sandboxing Earlier, we distinguished between the sandboxes in Android and Linux, and we comprehended the concept of user IDs, UIDs, assigned to individual apps on Android. Now, let's progress to explore the topic of app sandboxing. App sandboxing is like giving each app its own private room in the data-slash-data directory to keep its stuff. As we saw before, each app has its own rightful ownership of this space. 
This setup is like separating each app's belongings into its own little box or sandbox within the data slash data directory. To see this in action, you'd need a rooted device or emulator since the data data directory isn't available to regular users. To take a look, first get into your device's shell using ADB. Then, head over to the data slash data directory by typing cd data slash data. Once you're in, run the command ls hyphen l. If you check out the file permissions, you'll see that each app's directory is owned by itself. And they're not open for reading or writing by other users. It's like each app's room is locked and only they have the key. Can we break out of this protective sandbox? Well, according to Google, even though the app sandbox is strong, it's not completely unbeatable. If someone really wants to break out of it on a properly set up device, they'd need to compromise the security of the Linux kernel, which is a big deal. Here's where we get into Android rooting. Rooting gives someone what's like a master key for an Android system. It's similar to having the highest authority or being the ultimate boss in a game. In the world of computers, we call this root level the supreme user level. It's like being the king or queen of the system with the power to do anything. Normally, only the Android system's essential parts, like the kernel, run as this root. But when you root your device, you're kind of opening the doors for all apps to have that same power. So, imagine if everyone in your town suddenly became the mayor. They could change everything, including the roads, the buildings, and even the rules. In the Android world, when apps get this power, they can tinker with the system's core parts, the kernel, and other apps. They can even mess with an app's personal space, the sandbox, by breaking out of it. Just like in real life, having great power means great responsibility. But with great rooting comes significant risk. It's a trade-off between freedom and security in the Android universe. This compilation of insights provides us with a profound comprehension of the internal mechanisms of Android apps. Throughout this playlist, we've focused on grasping these internal workings, which serve as a foundational step toward delving into Android security. The objective of this playlist has been to furnish you with these pivotal concepts. In our forthcoming playlist, we'll explore the overarching strategies for targeting Android applications. If you have any questions related to this video, feel free to write them in the comments section.